Hello, everybody, and welcome to the CGRAP 2020 CGRAP for Beginners session. Um, I'll be your moderator tonight. My name is Alex Bryant. I am this year's CGRAP 2020 student volunteer program manager and next year's 2021 student volunteer uh, To my right, I have Alan Singh. He is the CGRAP Secret Cares Chair. Um, on top of um, Alan is Nikki Rose. Um, she is the Conference Advisory Group Chair. Uh, and then to the side, Nikki Rose is Tony Bayless, who is the Progress and Inclusion Chair. Um, before we get started, I want to verify um, a statement provided by HMC Graph for our participants, and it's to be mindful of the stream is motiva motivated, moderated by our team. We ask all comments to stay respectful of others and respect ACM's policy against harassment. This means to exercise consideration and respect in your speech and actions. Refrain from demeaning, discriminatory, or harassing behavior and speech. And be mindful to your fellow participants. No intimidating, harassing, abusive, discriminatory, derogatory, or demeaning speech or actions by any participant will be tolerated. So to start that off, I just want to say thank you so much for the CMC Graph, as well as the International Resource Center Committee um, for hosting this conversation this evening. Um, to get started, we want to share a video about um, how to navigate the conference, and then I'll kick off the first question. CGRAF 2020. In order to maximize your experience, here are some tips to prepare, explore, and extend this year's virtual conference. A note about this year's format. If you've attended SIGGRAPH in the past, you know that the volume of content is impressive and it's hard to see it all in just five days. This year we're taking a different approach. Think of the first week of the conference, which starts August 17th, as a warm-up or independent study. Much of the content will be ready to review. And don't worry, there'll be plenty to digest before the second week when all the content will be made available. During the second week, which starts August 24, there'll be opportunities to interact with fellow attendees, contributors, and exhibitors. And there'll be other events like Real Time Live, our keynote with Magic Lab's Marco Tempest, and of course, the Computer Animation Festival Electronic Theater. Remember, most conference content remains available on demand through October 27. So let's get started. When you first visit the SIGGRAPH 2020 lobby, you'll see on your left navigation with links to various sections of the conference and housekeeping items like your profile, support, community, and your personalized schedule. The center of your screen outlines major areas of the conference like on-demand sessions, scheduled sessions, the experience hall, and the exhibition. There are also videos which will highlight content and activities each day. One of the first things you'll want to do when you log in is complete your profile information by checking on My Profile. Add a photo, professional information, and adjust your privacy settings, especially if you want to network with others. Also take time to review the content on the sessions page and plan what you want to attend during the second week. You can filter by track and easily add them to your schedule and personal calendar. All sessions are listed in Pacific Daylight Time, so be sure to plan accordingly. Beginning of the week of August 17, you'll have access to pre-recorded on-demand sessions. Just click On Demand on the homepage for a full searchable listing. Take time during this first week to explore this preliminary content, make notes, and send questions to contributors through the text-based chat function in advance of the scheduled sessions that begin during week two. This is also a great time to check out content like posters and the Experience Hall, which includes the VR Theater, Immersive Pavilion, Emerging Technologies, and Art Gallery content. During the week of August 24, the remainder of the conference content comes online, including moderated live Q&A sessions, our keynote address, real-time live, appy hour, and the Electronic Theater. 
plus there'll be opportunities to network with other attendees. Production sessions will also be available during this second week, and the exhibition opens as well. While in the exhibition, be sure to visit virtual booths and schedule meetings with your favorite exhibitors. Check out the job fair and the exhibitor sessions as well. If you're looking for the Computer Animation Festival Electronic Theater, tickets are available at the registration page. Content is available on demand from August 24 through August 28. Once you purchase access, you'll receive an entry code and link. Need help? Just click on SIGGRAPH support to connect with a variety of resources that are there to assist. We know, it's a lot to experience, and that's what we love about SIGGRAPH. But unlike other years, SIGGRAPH 2020 extends your access until October 27th. So be sure to revisit content you love and catch up on content that you missed. We hope you enjoy SIGGRAPH 2020. Wow. So Seagraph's theme to think beyond takes on a whole new meaning this year. So my question starts off with Mickey Rose. Um, so can you tell us what are some key components for our attendees to utilize for this year's virtual conference? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I Let me see. I was going to share my screen, if that's OK. Um, I have a couple of things I wanted to point at as I talk, so that would be helpful. All right, so hopefully you can see that. Um, there's a lot of good stuff, and that video did a really great job of sort of a lot of words. I want to start out by saying this is the team that has put on this show for you guys. Um, they have done an awesome job over the last 18 months of setting up what was supposed to be an in-person SIGGRAPH, and then also a doubly awesome job um, pivoting in the last couple of months to make this a virtual co conference for everyone. Um, so kudos to them. They've done a great job. Um, as you saw in that video, we've got an on-demand week, a live week, and then uh, another couple of months of on-demand content available. Um, so I wanted to walk through just a couple of specific things about that. Um, in that first on-demand week, the 17th through the 23rd, starting tomorrow, um, there's going to be a lot of videos online for you ready to look at. So take some time, go through those. Um, there is that text-based um, chat that goes along with each of the videos, which is your opportunity to start asking questions. And then the live Q&A sessions that come up in the live week will be the place for the pre presenters and contributors to answer your questions. So our moderators will be asking questions on your behalf and you'll get to see the live answers come back that way. Um, do pay attention to the on-demand um, listings and make sure that the live Q&A sessions, you know when they're gonna be, put them in your schedule, make sure you're there. Some of them will be recorded, but there were some that we don't have permissions for. So some of the live Q&A sessions will only be shown at that one moment. So make sure you catch those. Um, they'll be clearly marked for you to know that. Um, there's a lot of great things. And then also that last on-demand section that we talked about is after the close of the live conference week. You get until October 27th, which is several more months worth of SIGGRAPH time. So it's a really cool way to experience SIGGRAPH this year. We're focusing on the positive here about going virtual, so that's really neat. Um, a lot of the content will also be moved into the ACM Digital Library after that, so it's a good place to look for the content that we have permissions to save there too. Um, you've probably seen registration levels, and I did want to point out a couple of special things. In the video, they pointed out that there will be a video on the main page of the platform. Um, that is going to be done by Christy Prawn, who is our SIGGRAPH 2020 conference chair, and she's planning to do videos for every day of the live part of the conference, so that will always be front and center here. She's going to give you her tips of what's new and exciting and special things to look for in each day of the conference, so I really recommend you look at that. And then there will always be an instructional video over here to help as well. Um, I wanted to answer what I'm sure is a big question right off the bat. Um, our in preview video there talked about the SIGGRAPH support option, which is a very clear and in the left side toolbar of the main platform hub page. Um, but to talk a little bit about what kinds of support you can get there, um, there is technical support, which would be anything with the platform itself, like a video is not playing or you can't get in or something like that. We'll have Pathfinders, which if anyone's been to the conference before, may be familiar with. It's a group of people um, who are very experienced navigating the conference, who have volunteered to spend time talking to people who are new to the conference and help them set up their schedules and decide what to go see and choose content to look at and stuff like that. So they'll be available this year by Zoom, and you might just see me in there too. 
Um, we'll have a link to registration in there that those people can help you if you like, can't get your registration set up properly or whatever. Um, exhibition management and our media press office will be also there. Um, and then finally, for any extra questions that don't fit into any of those categories, those get forwarded on to conference management directly from that SIGGRAPH support link. So we've got all kinds of help for you. That's where you go to find it. Um, also, a lot of good things with networking, um, setting up your profile would be in this option, um, meeting with different attendees, connecting with people on social media, um, lots of good tools in that left-hand toolbar I just wanted to point out there. This is kind of what the, the search um, pages will look like. You can filter different ways by on-demand or live or which day or what program you're interested in. So lots of really good ways to narrow down what you're looking for and then add that to your schedule, which will look like this. Um, so you can set up your schedule for every day of the conference um, time period. Um, and then within the hub platform, you can click on those and go straight to them when the time comes. You can also maybe make sure you're organizing yourself so you see the on-demand content and then go see the key question and answer session that goes along with it. Um, this is kind of what the, the pages will look like. Um, you'll see the listing of the contributor and the submission information that was put in and maybe like preview images. And then there will be a video for most of the content that you can watch that either explains what it is or notes from the contributor. Um, and then the chat function below it that I mentioned, you can start sending your questions in. So cool stuff that way. Um, some of our programs are going to be organized in this manner, which um, is called a carousel, uh, because it's things like the experience hall programs where you would on site be walking through an area and seeing different booths. But here you have the option of scrolling left and right and seeing all the various content that's been submitted that way. When you click on one of those, you go into that same page that I talked about before with the, the preview and the submission information and then the video and the chat function. Um, our posters program is a little bit special because there's so many posters. We didn't want you to have to carousel back and forth through 100 or so. Um, so we've got them listed in a different way. You can sort on that main page, and then once you click on one and go into it, you'll see the poster itself and the video in the chat. Um, please do make some time to go see our exhibition. It's going to be great. We've got a lot of great participants there who have um, done the same pivot that we've done and figured out how to present their awesome um, technology and tools in a virtual setting. So please make sure that you visit them. It's a good opportunity to talk to some new people. Um, and then the electronic theater, I just wanted to point out, you have 48 hours after you unlock your code and it does premiere with the, the pre-show that talks a little bit about it on Monday the 24th, which is the Monday of that live week, starting at 4.30 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. And make sure that you unlock your code for the electronic theater by that Friday, the 28th, um, the end of the day at 9.59 p.m. Just want to make sure everybody gets to use their tickets. And last but not least for me for right now, we do have some SIGGRAPH merchandise that you can get to from the SIGGRAPH store link, which I know is very important. Everybody wants the t-shirt and the mug. This year we also have a cool beer stein and a water bottle. Um, so that's it for me right now. Um, just wanted to give you that little intro. Um, there's a lot of great stuff to look for, so I'm excited about seeing you all at SIGGRAPH 2020 in the virtual conference. I didn't hear that part. Where, where, did I miss it? <laughs> I, I, you got me excited. I want to register. I know, me too. I'm all queued in, and thank you so much, Mickey, for giving us that insight. Um, I just want to let our attendees um, and guests on this session know um, we're going to be having a Q&A like, right, right after um, these quick questions, so make sure you fill in the comments, and we'll make sure to add it to our panelists. Um, so my next question is going into to Alan, which for over 47 years um, with the Seagraph conferences, um, and have provided computer graphics interactive techniques to our communities and to the global community at large. Um, can you share why it's important um, to be involved um, at the conference? Okay, yeah. So basically I started uh, volunteering at SIGGRAPH in the mid eighties. Uh, started off in my local Paris chapter, and honestly, my first volunteer role was to uh, lick envelopes and stuff envelopes. This was when we were doing paper mail. Yeah. We weren't quite electronic at the time. <laughs> and kept on volunteering to do more, and uh, several decades later, Ended up working on a multiple, you know, multiple uh, conferences in multiple roles and activities, and also at the organization. 
And in each activity, you participate in what makes SIGGRAPH so great. You get to go and put in your ideas and be able to go and orient the, you know, the direction that this organization goes in. It's all volunteer based. I mean, we have a great army of contractors who work with us to get things done. But the key strategic direction is volunteers. These are people like you and me who have decided to take their time and say SIGGRAPH is important for me and that's why I volunteer. So what I would encourage you all is volunteer. Come and talk to us in the chat rooms and we can show you what positions are available, what we're recruiting for, what we're trying to do. And that's how you help SIGGRAPH become what you'd like it to be. This is how you make change. This is how you make the organization go forwards and help push the direction that we go in. So I would encourage you strongly. I mean, you know, when we talked about this with Alex as we were preparing this, said, yeah, I started out licking envelopes and doing all the base stuff and ended up being president of the organization several decades later. And that was just because I cared and I wanted to see this organization move forward. And I kept on volunteering. And by the way, my presidential term ended in 2005, and I'm still volunteering. So keep it up. I mean, basically, I would encourage you all to seek out volunteer positions and continue helping us make SIGGRAPH great. So back to you, Alex. Uh, Alex, I can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's also very inspiring, especially for like young people like myself to like really get motivated and to see like how we can grow as an organization and learn from each other. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, so my next question goes to Tony. Um, so you've served also a couple of roles um, in the organization where, as being treasurer and now as ACMC Graph Diversity and Inclusion Chair. Uh, um, can you share what has your experience has been like in the organization over the years? Yeah, um, what I can share uh, is that uh, to reinforce a lot of the things that Alan is talking about in regard to uh, volunteering. Um, I started uh, back in eight, 1989, <laughs> and uh, when I started, uh, I had a lot of wonderful um, mentors. So I started when I was working at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications from the University of Illinois, and we had a big visualization team. And that uh, visualization team, uh, you'll see a lot of the individuals ended up moving into roles today uh, at a lot of studios and actually in academia and other places as well. And uh, with that sort of um, springboard to actually be a part uh, of the organization, they really welcomed me and made me feel a part of the greater enterprise of the organization. And then uh, Alan, uh, along with a few other uh, folks, uh, recruited me for opportunities and mentored me, shepherded me along the way to try to understand more about uh, the organization and what it meant to uh, be a part of it. And, and that volunteerism uh, helped me grow both professionally and personally as I basically moved through uh, understanding my own pathway for my own career and trying to uh, navigate what it is that I wanted to concentrate on and how I could basically benefit from uh, being engaged and involved. So uh, those benefits turned into more volunteer roles because uh, uh, one of the things that I uh, uh, got initially involved with was a old laboratory uh, that's now known as the studio. And we used to call it the Creative Applications Laboratory. Um, and we used to partner with a lot of our great exhibitors that we have currently, uh, NVIDIA, uh, AMD, uh, Intel, all of these exhibitors basically were a part of us getting to know one another better. So uh, with that said, you know, uh, I moved from that uh, sort of area of uh, volunteerism to the organization. So that was conference. 
And then I got more experience within the conference itself uh, and then gravitated over to the organization and being a part of it, was asked to uh, run as the treasurer, uh, was interviewed for the position as well, uh, because that's part of the process that we go through. And uh, we try to shepherd a lot, a lot of people, even with Mickey's role now, you know, there's this sort of shepherding and, and pipelining that we do to make sure that we build people up to actually go. I remember when we were first talking about Mickey a long time ago, and when she was a, just a student, and we knew she was going to be a conference chair. So and we were just so psyched about seeing very young people who uh, were excited about the organization and the conference and the work that they did. So what they do, what we typically have done is take that energy and basically streamline it into roles and, and things of that nature for us. So uh, my role, uh, the treasurer lasted uh, for uh, three years and then I basically moved on uh, to have other roles. And now I'm currently the uh, diversity and inclusion chair for the conference uh, in its first um, position uh, of doing that. And I'm going into my third year of basically being in that role. And I'm um, so honored and privileged to try to do that. Uh, our mission is really uh, trying to create awareness and education and re resources both on site and year round for our community at large to help people tell their own stories even more. Uh, and, you know, with a focus in on diversity, inclusion, equity, access, and leadership as components. So, ideal is what we call it. So the, all of those things come to be a part of uh, who we are and we're all learning this process as we go through it. So my experience has been um, almost over 30 years, but I've had a lot of wonderful people who have been with me along the way that starts with young people like yourself, Alex, but um, some of the pioneers that have been uh, a part of this organization since 1974 as well. So I have the honor and privilege to know a lot of people through those years. And then just as the spectrum, just like you said, like being amongst all of you and your journey leading up to where you are right now is um, definitely gives a type of like a guide map for like upcoming students, volunteers and stuff like that. And that kind of like gives, gives me like a segue into the next segment about talking a little bit the, about the student volunteer program that the conference provides, um, that shepherds and guides and provides operational support um, to all the different programs here. And I started with it back in 2014 um, and now part of the student volunteer subcommittee um, this year to it, it get the students really excited and to help out and to learn different things like the immersive pavilion and the art papers and the technical papers and the computer animation festival and it also gives them like insight into like okay what kind of internships and industries do you want to get the feet with uh, into um, so one part of the conference that um, is also be very essential especially to um, the students and um, unemployed would be the job fair um, to see like what activity, activities and what companies are offering in regard to internships or available open positions. So I just want to give that a shout out as well. Um, okay, so my next question. Oh, sorry. So, so uh, Alex, can I interrupt for a second? And, and I really want to give uh, Mickey uh, and Christy and the 2020 team a lot of kudos um, because uh, quite frankly, um, most of the public won't understand all the things in the background. And with this pandemic and everything else that we have gone through as uh, everyone else has, there's a different sort of element that really comes to play with these this conference. And I'm, I'm just gonna be real uh, because the, 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 the real part of it is that uh, the, we had to, as an organization and conference, really try to pivot. And if without these volunteers and uh, Mickey and Christy and her team, all of these individuals to basically try to do this within a two month window, that that's a huge feat. And they deserve every single ounce of credit 
to really try to give our community as much as we could do within the time that we can do it. And it, 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 it's a hum, 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 humongous feat uh, to actually do the work. And all of these individuals, you have to remember, have full-time jobs. Each and every one of them have full-time jobs. We're volunteers. And uh, you know, I give it to their companies to, for their support. I give it to our, our, our team that works from behind the scenes, Smith Buckland and others that actually have worked with us for so many years. But to move this to a place to where we have it today is huge uh, because it, you know, uh, Mickey and, uh, and Christy and the team have just been phenomenal uh, to really try to pull this off in the way they have. And I hope our community really understands that and appreciates that we, we've done what we could um, to really try to keep our, um, our effort and our community going during this pandemic. Uh, because let's not forget that there, we have a world pandemic going on and everybody is trying to find some sense of what is called normalcy as best they can. And um, this is part of our community and it's been there for a long time. So uh, I just wanna say thank you, Mickey, and thank you, Christy, um, for everything that you're doing and all of your committee folks, because it's been tremendous. It's really all Christy and her team. They've done an excellent job and you're right, it's been a Herculean effort. So Christy and our contractor groups will just pulled it out. It, it's going to be awesome. And I'm just really excited to see how it ends up. So. Yeah. And then thank you, Tony, for bringing that up too. And the, to just to echo that, like it's a marathon and just to see it come to this finish line and open up and starting tomorrow, the on-demand sessions um, become available and um, as well as others. So um, just good job on everybody's front there. Um, going into the next question, and this is kind of talking about the attendee experience, um, this is more guided towards Mickey. Are you able to share about some stuff that attendees can get um, for like um, networking to, I heard there's some type of um, escape room kind of thing happening. Are you able to mm -hmm. share some? Yeah, um, there, there's all kinds of really cool stuff going on. Um, as far as networking goes, the first thing, um, as the intro video kind of suggested, is to get into your profile set it up, make sure that you're setting yourself open to networking. Um, you do have to opt into that. And then start meeting people that are attending the conference with you. Um, start connecting with people with similar interests. Um, go to BOFs and have like random conversations that way, get to know people. Um, and then as far as actual like set up networking experiences, we do have plans for some really fun things, um, like an escape room going on. Um, there'll be information on that in the Hub platform. Uh, we're still like some of these are coming together still so we're still working on some of the details for them we'll have a lot of the same things that you end up seeing at a, an on-site SIGGRAPH just done virtually so the the sake party is being set up um, for monday evening and that'll take place after the premiere of the computer animation festival each night there will be a, a half uh, i think it's a zoom based happy hour um that will just be everybody like byob come have a drink talk with people about what you saw in the day's sessions um, that'll be really neat. There's some plans for a couple of other fun little activities that we're still bringing together. So I don't want to say anything until it's like fully worked out. There's a lot of cool stuff. And then chapters is going above and beyond and extending their typical Monday night chapters party to a full week of activities. They're doing all kinds of great stuff like life drawing. And, um, I think there's a VR party sort of stuff. It's going to be on each day, different chapters are helping host this stuff. Um, and they have information about that on party.sigraph.org is where you will find all that stuff. There's all kinds of really neat stuff um, that the community has brought up and come together to put on. Um, it's really been impressive to watch people work together. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see how people and the audience just interacts with all of it. Um, so my next question is going to Alan, and we want to give more for our audience like how Seagraph Cares would be intervening with the conference as well as the organization overall. Sure. So first, a little bit of background on SIGGRAPH CARES for people who may not be aware of what, you know, what it's all about. So SIGGRAPH CARES is a subcommittee of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee. Uh, basically, all of the activities 
that SIGGRAPH organizes are, you know, abide by ACM's policy against discrimination and harassment. So our role is to help people who are targets of harassment or issues of um, discrimination and to help them go and report the issues. Uh, we've been in place for three years now. When we first started out, the policies in place at ACM SIGGRAPH required us to have the person who wanted to report the violation of our policies all the way up to either the president of the ACM, so the ACM is our parent organization, the CEO of the ACM or the CEO of the ACM. And that was a fairly daunting uh, task to impose on somebody who's just gone through what was possibly a very, fairly terrible experience. So what we wanted to do was to make that whole process of reporting any issues smoother. And we worked with our parent organization with ACM to allow people to report it to report any incidents through an online forum. And I'll be posting the links to that forum directly in the comments at the end of this talk. As you know, as well, if you'd like to speak to a person, the members of my committee are ready to work with you if you have incidents to report. And you can reach us by sending email to SIGGRAPH underscore CARES at SIGGRAPH.org. And again, I'll put that email in the uh, comments at the end so that you can all find that information. Basically, what we're seeing is that we expect people to behave themselves, but not all people always do. So we want to go and help anybody who is the target of improper behavior report such incidents so that we can take appropriate action. Wow. Well, thank you so much for providing that insightful information. Um, to everybody. Um, so my next question goes into um, what the parent organization ACM SIGGRAPH provides at the conference. So Tony, would you be able to tell us some more about that? Oh, Tony, I think you're mic. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. I, I did mute myself, uh, so I didn't create any background noise. Um, yeah, so, uh, the conference, as Mickey said uh, earlier, uh, we have two starting tomorrow and then running. Um, well, we're starting today, quite frankly. So CGRAPH, uh, ACM CGRAPH for beginners. And we typically have this at the conference as well. Uh, and as um, any conference, we want to try and give information. And our wonderful uh, International Resources uh, Committee basically uh, put this together uh, just about every year, I believe, right? So, uh, and the international uh, committee uh, will have um, activities and, and things going on all week uh, for our international community. Uh, so I uh, encourage you to go online and go to our uh, web pages. Uh, definitely under uh, the web pages for conference and conference content, and then that way you can look at all the different information and the way it's laid out is very. Uh, nice, because um, it starts off with uh, uh, showing uh, the awards that we basically will have uh, as well uh, showcased in Diversity and Inclusion Summit, which is next weekend, in fact. We are kind of in between of what is going on, um, but we we try to do something here uh, during the weekend uh, hours because, you know, a lot of the things that we were trying to navigate is we knew that people um, necessarily didn't have maybe the opportunity to go away for a conference, perhaps. And as a result, we wanted to try to spread out the breadth of information that we wanted to share. And we had wonderful people who submitted content. So with that said, us spreading that out in a way that actually may fit into people's schedules and then they can pick and choose. And then, you know, Mickey had talked about things that be uh, online for a while till October as well. So we'll have our uh, uh, Diversity and Inclusion Summit on the 22nd and 23rd. Uh, we have Frontiers, uh, which showcases uh, perspectives on emergent, um, uh, em emerging and adjacent uh, areas of interest that are associated with ACM. 
uh, MK Ailey and, and Adam uh, did a wonderful job putting things together for that. They have uh, a session on August 25th uh, from two to three on uh, visual effects to medical simulations as an example. And then on uh, August 27th is another one. Uh, we typically work with the conference as well. We have uh, typically a graduate uh, cohorts where we actually have a doctoral consortium. Unfortunately, we couldn't do that this year, uh, but we have a thesis fact for it that would also be a part. So a big part of the conference is also in the organization is enriching our, basically our student base, our acad academic base as much as possible, and then helping them as well. So nurturing them um, as part of the equation of what we're going to do there. Uh, we have our art gallery, uh, and um, uh, art uh, educators as well, uh, educators form. Uh, the educators form typically works within the landscape of uh, helping other uh, educators in the space of K through 12, all the way up to graduate school. All right, so all of these things are be a part of uh, the wonderful things that's a collaboration, quite frankly, with the conference. You know, this is our annual big event that we put together along with another conference we have later on in the year with Seagraph Asia. But, you know, we collaborate with our uh, conference team, uh, Mickey and the rest of the conference advisory group on trying to really highlight the things that we want to try and do. And it's a, uh, uh, a time frame for the organization uh, to showcase a lot of the things of interest that uh, helps people tell their own stories, because that's part of our mission space and what we want to try and do. So. Can't hear you, Alex. No, that's everything in a nutshell. So, um, so well, I'll try it. <laughs> I'll probably give yeah. it too much, Alex. <laughs> my, um, so, one of my final questions before I open it up for the Q and A. So, if you're asking some questions in the chat right now, we'll be asking that a little bit later. So, my questions will be going in this type of order from Mickey to Alan to Tony, and then I'll answer it myself. Is why should people attend Seagraph? Because hmm. it's dope. <laughs> yeah, it's, when, when I ask that question, it's really hard to choose one thing to say. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Right. In this year in particular, community and networking and people are that much more important, right? Like, it's always important. It is the main reason to go and see your friends and your colleagues and meet new people. They're making these great advances. Um, and that's all well and good when we're in person, but it's that much harder when we've all been stuck in our own homes by ourselves for four months. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I don't know about everybody else. I live alone, so I am starved for human contact, right? But I am so looking forward to this upcoming couple of weeks to be able to reconnect with people in the best way possible right now. Um, that said, I do have a couple of favorites within the conference, and so I personally always look forward to the electronic theater. Um, and to production sessions. It's just my bread and butter. Everybody knows that about me, I think. Um, so I'm really, really excited to see those take place and to ask questions. Um, I don't know about you guys. I'm one of those people that sometimes I don't want to get up at a mic in front of 2,000 people and ask a question. And so this virtual setting actually makes it a ton easier, right? Like you can just text in your question and someone else will read it for you. Um, so yeah, there's all kinds of great stuff I'm really looking forward to. That's, that's me. All right, Mr. Alan, what do sure. you think? Now for me, and again, so I'm not artistic in any sense. I'm a math guy and been into algorithms forever. So my favorite part is the paper session. That's where I go. That's where I get my energy from. And the cool thing about SIGGRAPH is there is so much for everybody. It's not just one type of attendee. There are hundreds of different types of attendees. And the idea is, Everybody has something that they can find here. And, you know, just to reinforce what Mickey was saying, the actual reason I go to SIGGRAPH every year is to see my favorite people. It's to network. It's to get back in touch with colleagues, you know, all the other volunteers that I've been working with for decades now and catch up with them and see where things are going to get a sense of where the industry is heading, what we're doing, what's new, and what I should be aware of in terms of what I'm doing in my profession. 
Okay. I love that. Uh, I, I guess I'll go next then, Alex. Um, I'm kind of a, a, a hybrid of both. Um, being um, in science uh, and technology for uh, so many years, um, I really love the technical side of the house. Um, actually going in, seeing the exhibitors, seeing uh, what is basically happening in the industry as a whole, uh, hearing from uh, the researchers and some of the research that is going on to actually uh, those wonderful production sessions that Mickey uh, is talking about, uh, where we have uh, wonderful folks that have uh, thrilled us with on-screen presence that we really love. Because, I mean, who hasn't watched you know, some of the things that have gone on from with companies from ILM, you know, to all the Marvel uh, that shows that we've been watching uh, of late. And um, those things uh, are exciting. And then to also see what happens on an independent scale and, and with our young people that is sometimes showcased in our electronic theater, seeing those kind of things basically um, uh, what new sort of creativity that's happening, seeing the artwork uh, as well. Um, I, I've always been thrilled by all of that. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not an artist. My daughter is. She's wonderful. But I, uh, uh, I basically am just thrilled by everything that goes on. And then lastly, the community. So just being a part of that community and being a part of uh, folks that I have sort of grown up with and mature with over time. Um, I feel a kinship, a true kinship with everyone that I basically have worked with. I've, I've even seen a couple people run across the chat, uh, you know, Rob uh, LeBray, who basically was a part of our, um, my creative applications lab team back in 2000. So that's a long time ago, guys. So uh, that, that was cool to see him just basically come on board and stuff. And I still talk to some friends, Gary Pax, uh, CEOs and, and, and others. And it's been a wonderful journey. Um, so everything that's a part of the conference, I love. And, don't, and I'm going to let you talk about the student volunteers because uh, that's also been a big sort of close to home um, sort of thing for me. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, and it's a pick and choose on everybody's feedback, like the production sessions. That was one of the things that when I started as a student volunteer, got me really excited and see like everything I saw from like behind the scenes, everything you see in the credits and all the people that work behind it. Um, you get to right. see that broken down. And as well as the community, every year you keep coming back, the community just gets bigger and bigger and you find out new things all the time. Um, and then also being a student volunteer, you get to do this as a student you get to come to um, the conference in person or virtual and actually be a part of it and donate a few hours, represent your school and see what you want to do. And basically sometimes what will happen, you'll see colleagues in your industry, um, maybe future employers, um, colleagues that you actually might even present together at the conference. Um, one of the things that I'm really excited about for this year in particular is the extensiveness of the availability of the conference. So sometimes if you're rushing, if you're going in person, you're rushing and trying to make sure you go to everything on time and stuff like this. Now it's spread across two weeks. You get the first week of on demand to, at your, to view at your pleasure and then the simulcasts live on the second week and then having that content available until October 27th um, just to view at your own time. Uh, I think that's really impressive and great value um, and to really get into the depth of all the content this year. So that's something that I think is worth um, attending and you have to see more um, than you could in previous time. So yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so now we're gonna go into the public um, questions that you've been feeding in through this um, session. Um, I want to let people know if you're watching the replay, um, feel free to also comment and our team or CGOF conferences team will also look at these questions as well. Thanks. Um, okay, so the first question I have is when will we get info to log into the platform, to log into the platform? Um, sure. 
Tomorrow morning, yeah. you'll get emails with the information. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I, I think Mickey's going to end up getting a lot of questions here. There's a lot of questions coming in about. Uh, um, um, they also want to know if the platform um, will be. Is it on two separate platforms? So they have one as a virtual. I think it's all on two one platform. Um, and then depending on which session you go to, they'll go to a different location if necessary. Like on computer animation festival when you plug in. That's a little um, bit different. For the most part, there are not two platforms. It's one platform that utilizes Zoom. So Hub is the name of the platform that we're using. And the Zoom sessions that each of the on demand well, it's not quite right. Each of the, the on demand are just videos that are hosted within Hub. Um, but the Q and A sessions and the live sessions will be hosted through Zoom through Hub. So it's not like two separate things. You just click on the link from your Hub setup and you go straight to it. Um, the Computer Animation Festival is a bit of a different boost. So that is hosted um, in another thing, but you will get specific information about how to get to that. Um, and that's just because it's um, it's a bit of a different format. And it's definitely one of those things that people wanted to be able to watch on a big screen and have um, the best possible viewing experience instead of maybe like the equivalent of a, a Zoom uh, session or something on your laptop or whatever. So that's the reason for that. Um, it should be fairly seamless. It shouldn't be a big deal. So I wouldn't worry too much about that part. Appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so the next question is for Alan. So people are asking yeah. if Lego um, Alan is going to be available for this year. Oh, he will. And by the way, he's sitting right by me. So for those of you who aren't SIGGRAPH old timers or who are SIGGRAPH old timers, he is here, he is watching, and he will be virtually attending. So watch out for him. Uh, we will be posting uh, images that you can use to go and composite him over your own pictures to virtually show you holding him at this conference since we can't do it physically. So that's coming soon. It's fantastic. Um, so the next question I have is more targeted towards students. I can take a little bit at it, um, but I'd love to hear all of your experiences as well. It says, which parts of the conference do you recommend for students to check out? Um, as a former student during the, my first two years, um, I always say try a diverse group of programming. So try a course, try a panel, do a talk. If you can do a production session um, and then go from there if you have time and availability. But this year you have so much to look at. Um, I would say just take it in doses and don't, feel, don't overwhelm yourself. So I'd love to hear what, Mickey, what you have to say uh, based on this question. Yeah, I think that's really good advice. Um, I also like to tell people uh, just to sort of get it out there. Like when I was a student attending SIGGRAPH, I would go to talks and technical papers and not understand the thing. Like it would go right over my head. I was not at all advanced enough yet to even know what they were talking about. Just being there was enough inspiration to get to that point. Um, so I would say go to that stuff and watch and gather what you can and then that'll inspire you in your own studies to get to the point where you can work in that space as well. Um, I would say talks, technical papers, courses, all that stuff is going to be really meaty information wise. Definitely check those out. Also check out the um, immersive pavilion and the emerging technologies area and the art gallery. Um, everything at SIGGRAPH is just so inspiring. You want to make sure you test out every little bit of it. So yeah, get your feet wet. You've got several months to see most of that stuff. So spend the time wisely. Fantastic. Um, Alan, you want to take on that route as well, like for students? Sure. You know, I think Mickey hit on, you know, the essential parts. The key thing is there is so much going on at the SIGGRAPH conference that you should take advantage of as much of it as you can. Try it out. Try things that you would never have thought to do and take part just to go and see. Getting that experience is great because it will show you things that you wouldn't ever be able to see anywhere else. And to get a sense for what else is out there, or what else might challenge your curiosity and where you might want to look that you haven't looked before, okay? It's one of the things that I love about going to the conference. And again, I've been going to every single conference since uh, 1986. And every year, 
I see something new, I see something that excites me, something that makes me think about what else I could do that challenges what I thought I knew about graphics before. So take advantage of it. Uh, the nice thing this year, and I see this as a great advantage in terms of what we're doing, is having the content available through the end of October means that you're not stuck with the usual conundrum at SIGGRAPH is that there are five different events you want to go to, all scheduled at the same time. So you have to make hard choices. This year, you'll be able to take advantage of the virtual format to go and see things that you wouldn't have had time to see in our live conferences. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, don't expect to see me out doing very much between now and October 27th. And so I expect to be really busy catching up on everything. You go and see that. And for students, this is a great opportunity. So by all means, take advantage of it. Experience as much as you can. There is so much going on at SIGGRAPH. And having it online and available you know, through the end of October, it's just a great benefit. Yeah, definitely. That's that's really good advice um, for everyone to take in for sure. Um, so the next question I get coming in is about teenage students that are, have like huge potential in the population. Um, they found them to be love what SeaGraph community is doing and has to offer, and about the potential to include them in the future. So I would say, um, in regards to the student volunteer program, um, we um, accept high school students um, over the age of eighteen. Um, while enrolled into school. Um, in addition, in, from previous years, there was childcare provided as well um, into that, but there's some content that would be available um, that would be friendly to team viewing as well. But I would love to hear, Tony, what would you have to say for that? Well, um, I, I am basically serving on a, a, a board for a, a girls organization in Los Angeles called Empower Her. And uh, Mickey has uh, helped me and MK, uh, and I know our audience may not know, they can see Mickey, but they may not know MK, um, has uh, really helped me uh, really bring these young people, they were teenagers and, and middle schoolers. And what excited them uh, about the conference, look at anything that's immersive, anything that can help them sort of understand the landscape of what the conference is about. You know, when it's in person, I took them to the studio quite a bit uh, and they loved it. One young lady, well, actually three young women that basically went into the studio are now studying computer science and visual effects uh, in that domain space. So, you know, it, it, it's wonderful of what can be inspired by young people. So I would say things that can give them an experience that how they can get involved, watching the, the production sessions watching the films that basically go into the electronic theater, uh, anything immersive, because, uh, you know, as Mickey said, things may be over their head on some of the technical talks and things of that nature. So I'll let Mickey jump in on that one as well, because she may have the, a little bit more uh, information than I do uh, about what may uh, be inspiring to them. Mickey? Um, I think I froze for a second. So if I looked weird for a minute there, I apologize. Um, but in answer to uh, teens getting involved, I don't think there's actually an age limit on the virtual conference for participation. Um, right. So I think technically you could get involved. You could attend SIGGRAPH 2020. Um, typically when we're in person, there are some age limits, which at the moment I'm a little fuzzy on just because we changed them a little bit last year. but we do allow children of a certain age to attend. So I, I think you have to be 12 or older to attend in person. So we're definitely welcoming. Um, you just have to have a parent with you for most of that stuff because once in a while there is some content that's a little bit suggestive, a little bit questionable for younger audiences. Um, but with a parent's permission, you're quite welcome to participate. Um, and I think having this virtually is actually a much wider open door for people to start participating. Um, so I think it's a good time to try. That's fantastic. Uh, more than merrier. I can't wait to see all different ages come through. Um, so I'm now going to go to another question. 
So someone was asking, like, do we does someone need to um, add a virtual um, video conference calling platform to be installed to register? I don't think so, correct? No, everything will go through Hub. So um, tomorrow morning, everyone should be getting emails with the link to the Hub platform. You log in there, get your um, profile set up, and start Zoom in right from there. Fantastic. Yeah, um, do you have to install Hub? I mean, no. uh, and Zoom, you don't need to no. install Zoom or anything of that nature, correct? No, it's just a, it's a, it's a website that you will go to and it's a, a platform within itself. So it's just a link. Okay. Um, okay, the next question is, what is the most common mistake first time attendees do at Seagraph and how to avoid it? Uh, uh, I don't really try to see too much. <laughs> well, I can take a stab at that one. Uh, the biggest mistake is to not introduce yourself to the people who are near you. It's being afraid to network is probably the biggest mistake you can make at SIGGRAPH. People are friendly, people are open, people are willing to go and share their experiences, including the most senior members of our organization who love talking with new attendees to go and help guide them through it, you'll find that it's really easy to miss out on a lot of the SIGGRAPH activities if you don't network while you're there. So take advantage of it. It's kind of hard when you're a first time attendee and you may be a little bit shy. It's don't be, it's, you know, the key advice is reach out to people, they will help and throw out. I mean, I can share a story about my first SIGGRAPH. When I first came in, I had read a paper by a researcher named Craig Reynolds, and I was amazed by the paper before I got to the conference and decided I was going to attend his talk and was afraid to reach out to him to talk to him because I was just so amazed by the work he had done that I was going to, there was no way he would pay attention to me. And in the middle of his talk, he referenced a piece that I had in the art show. Okay, so despite the fact that I was claiming to be an uber geek and never doing art, yes, I'll admit to it, I have. But it's not anything as powerful as what Mickey does. It was you know, really interesting. Now, the key thing was when Craig mentioned that, I was very surprised and went up to see him afterwards and said, you know, you mentioned that you saw this piece and just wanted to introduce myself. That was my piece. That was something that I created. And he started questioning the technology that I used in that. And he was, he guessed what I was doing and we became the best of friends. And to this day, Craig is one of the guys that I go up to and I look forward to meeting at every single SIGGRAPH. And this is the story of pretty much every year, there's always somebody new that I've met at the conference who you end up becoming best buddies with. And I look forward to meeting at future conferences. So the key thing is reach out to people, they're open. There's so much going on and you, the contacts that you nurture at the SIGGRAPH conference are contacts that will follow you throughout your career. So it's don't hesitate, people are friendly. As a, as a nice way to like conclude um, our session. So we now wrapped up to the end of it. Um, so right now I just want to encourage everybody to please register at Seagar 2020. And I can't wait to see you all there. So thank you so much to all our panelists, um, to Mickey, Alan, Tony, thank you so much for your time, as well as ACM Seagraph, um, Seagraph Conferences and ACM Seagraph International Resource Center. And if you want to find out more, uh, you know where to reach us. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Alex.